get my six. I find myself in a pretty serious predicament and I sure could use your advice. Keep your eyes on the cake. Get all Kevin E. Lake books in print or Kindle from the link at Amazon. No, well, to, hold on. <sighs> well, that season is upon us. In all seriousness now, since I have read the title and the description, uh, I have a predicament and I really do need your advice. I want your advice. Um, I know my clothes don't match. It's not about fashion. Crazy Lake don't match. Crazy Lake don't care. I just happened to grab, you know, the closest shirt because I was down there riding in my boxers actually. So I grabbed the closest shirt and pair of shorts and just put them on to come make this video. Uh, Speaking of which, you know, sent by a, a, a fan and, and uh, their grandmother from out in California, and I've been getting everything y'all been sending. Uh, the trees, the plants, the candy, the food, the clothing, the tools, all of it. Um, the hate literature. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh, a, a white supremacist book with an entire chapter on the dangers uh of bringing non-white, non-Western immigrants into this great country uh, with a note that says, your family needs to pay particular interest to this chapter. Page numbers highlighted. Crazy, right? I know. You know, the only thing crazier than that is they put their name and return address on this hate mail that they sent to our family so that when we took it to the well, I don't give it all away because I sure do love surprises, don't you? <laughs> so yeah, we get just about everything. Appreciate most of it. <laughs> but here's my predicament. I believe in karma. I do believe that we reap what we sow. And I do believe that what we put out to the universe, the universe sends back to us. So, uh, something has been brought to my attention by somebody in the know that something kind of not so good might happen as a result of something I'm doing, and I don't think I want any part of it because karma, reaping what you sow, energy you put out coming back and all that stuff. Keep your eyes on the cake. And you never know what might come and get it. Could be those three big old white-tailed buck deer that were getting my fruit from the orchard yesterday morning. Could be that old married couple of pileated woodpeckers that's been living here ever since we got here. I think they were here before us. Potentially, like someone or something else. Do you like those two videos I gave you here the last couple of mornings? The, both of those things happen in the mornings. Um, it's not a coincidence or an accident that I just happened to have my camera with me when those things showed up because here's a, I'm going to get on with my predicament because I really do need your advice. I'm not just trying to stretch this video out for longer watch time. Something happened about 10 days or so ago, two weeks at the most. Uh, 
I know it's been within the last month because my wife and son were already in the Philippines visiting family over there. I was out on the front porch at 6.20 a.m. because I looked at my watch when it happened. I didn't have my phone, didn't have my camera with me. Um, I just had my cup of coffee. I was sitting there uh, looking at the pond, waiting for the sun. You know, it was daylight, but the sun hadn't actually risen above the horizon. Was, I was just enjoying a very beautiful morning, doing my morning prayers and meditations, enjoying the fact that back then that season was not quite upon us yet as it is now. And at the very far corner of my pond, where we got video footage of that uh, that bass this big last week in the video I made, the video, it was clickbait. You probably didn't fall for it. But in that clickbait video that you probably didn't fall for, there was a bass this long. Right there at that end of the pond, that's where the, the, the spillway is, and it drops down into a ravine. Well, I'm just looking in that direction, and of all things, here comes a, a cat walking up out of there. Well, it wasn't my cat. It wasn't Cleopatra. She was somewhere. I don't even know. She might have been outside. She might have been inside. This cat was solid black. Solid black, okay? And it comes up out of that ravine, and it's walking towards me, but it's looking left, looking right, looking left, looking right, all paranoid-like. And it appeared to be a kitten. And I was sitting there, and I thought, wow, here's a little lost kitten. I, I've never seen another cat. At, well, Cleopatra has two boyfriends, and we know who owns them. They're those um, tuxedo tomcats. One lives at a house up this way. One lives over here. Other than my cat, those are the only two cats I've seen out here in five years. And Cleopatra is, is fixed. She can't have babies, okay? They're sneaky, man. They'll come up on you and tie a fishing line to bananas and pull it when you're not looking. Sneaky. So anyway, this cat's getting closer to me. He's like, or she or it or they, or like, get on with the story already. Okay. So as this cat gets closer to me, I, I it still looks kitten-ish in that it looks very youthful, but I was able to kind of judge its size. It was bigger than Cleopatra, but it was skinnier. Its legs were longer. Its tail was longer and skinnier. You know, she's a big old bushy Angora type. It's funny. Got her from the SPCA, and they said she was an American short hair. And I'm like, where's the short hair? Which one's short? That's like, brah, a couple weeks ago telling me to get hair dyed for that gray hair on my chest. Like, which one? I mean, I couldn't find the short hair on my cat. She's like a puffball, you know? I had this fleeting thought go through my head that that wasn't like a domestic house cat. That was a that was a black panther. That was a puma. And just before Christmas of last year, you might remember a video I made. We went and bought a Christmas tree, you know, driving on the road wise, a place that's half a mile away. But if you hike through the mountains or you went as a crow fly, it's not far or as a crow flies. It's not far from here. And the woman, I think she said twice they've seen pumas out that way. So I said, hey, kitty, kitty. And that thing didn't even take the time to look at me. It ran up across my driveway. There's a bank there. So I watched the bank to see where it was going to come up or was it going to go out and shoot out across, you know, the, through the fruit orchard and go across the road. I watched for a good minute or two and it never came out. So it was hunkered up against that bank, not moving. So I said to myself, self, that might be a freaking puma. Go inside and get the camera real quick. So I ran inside, got the camera, came back out, and I snuck over to that bank, you know, 6.25 a.m., and uh, it wasn't there. And I had the camera rolling. I was recording the whole time. I, of course, just didn't publish the video because it didn't capture what I was trying to get in the video, potentially. I mean, sometimes we get stuff that I don't think we get, but, uh, excuse me, wonderful viewers like you see it. Well, that cat was nowhere to be seen, and I looked all over. I spent about 20 minutes just walking around that uh, vicinity. Never saw that cat again, and I haven't seen it since. So that's why now in the mornings when I'm out there having my coffee or when I'm out there doing anything, because it used to be 
I only had my phone with me if I was coming up here to make a video. Other than that, it's usually off, you know, because my wife and son are here, whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm not calling nobody and I don't care if somebody calls me. I'm with my wife and kid, doesn't matter, leave the phone off. That's just how I roll. Um, but I've had it on because they're in the Philippines. But ever since I saw that cat that morning, I'm keeping it with me because I never know what I'm going to see and when I'm going to see it. And fortunately, I was able to get that video footage of those deer yesterday. And did you hear that loud, thunderous knock? Go back and watch the video if you didn't. Between, I think, 101 and 103, it's only like a two-minute long video. But there was like this loud, thunderous tree knock, and those deer skedaddled. Then today I got the woodpeckers. Who knows what we'll get tomorrow morning or whenever. Okay, so here's a predicament. And yeah, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about the book I'm writing that I'm in the final stretch. It's like if this were a, if this were a mile race, we're getting ready, ready to enter the last lap. We're not quite, you know, 400 meters go, one lap to go, but we're coming down that home stretch getting ready for the gun lap or the bell lap. You know that last lap they ring a bell or fire a gun? That's how close we are uh, with, of course, the first draft. And I go through five drafts before I even submit it to my editor. And I've talked about this before because I want to make sure it says what I want it to say. I don't want to have uh, uh, some stuff in there that's kind of iffy so that he thinks, his, he's a male, his name's Truman Jackson. Um, if it sounds like a pseudonym, it's because it is. Uh, this guy's more paranoid than me. Uh, but he's really good at what he does. I can't even say where he lives. Um, I would tell you that my wife is in closer proximity to him right now than I am. I thought I heard a tree knock. But anyway, um, I don't want it to say when he's done with his job what he thought I meant. I wanted to say what I meant. So I go through five drafts, and this is advice given by Stephen King. I didn't come up with this uh, before he gets it. But I've been talking to him about it a little bit, um, you know, and, and people are just saying the darndest things about it. You know, it's going to be the book known as being responsible for putting man on Mars, uh, going to change the, the view of the Earth's surface as seen by satellite from outer space, all just... He's like, you got to give me a sample. So I sent him a sample... And uh, this is my dilemma. It's like, I don't even know if I should finish this thing or not because of karma and reaping what we sow and the universe giving me what I give it and all this. He read through the sample and, and he got back to me and he said, you know, Crazy Lake. He says, I've just got one concern with this thing. And I'm like, what's that? And he says, I think that when people read this book, their heads are going to explode. And I'm like, oh, yeah, their minds will be blown, right? Boom, mind blown. He goes, no, 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 man. I'm talking actual bona fide spontaneous combustion here. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, man, forget that. Putting man on Mars and changing the face of the whatever. This book is going to make people's heads explode. <sighs> he's like, he's like, look, he says, mark my words. He said, should you go through with this? He says, I want you to find currently kept statistics on the rate of uh, recorded spontaneous combustion among human beings. Release this book if you dare. And then I want you to follow those statistics and see if it trends upwards. See if those statistics trend upward. <sighs> I was like, You know, I got to be honest with you all about something. That cake looks delicious, but it's not. I overcooked it. No, I didn't burn it. It's not black. Uh, it's just hard. Like, it's got like a hard outer shell. I just overcooked it. And I know how to bake a cake. Don't be feeling sorry for me. Don't be like, oh, poor guy. His wife's away. And so he can't even have a nice cake. I know how to bake a cake. I overcooked it because I was working on this book and I was so in the zone in this scene about a camel. I'm going to tell you about it. It's part of it. 
that I forgot the cake was in the oven and it overcooked. But don't start mailing me cakes, man. You guys are mailing me everything else. Listen, I know how to bake a cake. You just got to pay attention to how long you keep it in the oven. I had another one. I had another, you know, thing of icing. I got the other cake in the oven right now. There's a cake in there baking right now. You just you got to make This one was just overcooked. I mean, this one was just overcooked. All right. So anyway, my editor is convinced this book is going to make people's heads literally explode. And I don't know if I want to be responsible for that. I don't want to be responsible for that. So I said, gosh, dang, Truman Jackson. I don't know if I should finish this book. He goes, you got to. I'm like, why? And he's like, you're pointing out the sheer lunacy of mankind. You know, and he told me, you know, he said, he says, only people who really get you and your mindset will be the only people who really get this book. He's like, this book is going to be over so many people's heads. It's just going to piss a lot of people off. They're going to think you're making fun of them because they believe a certain way, or they're going to think you're making fun of them because they don't believe a certain way. And then most of them are going to be confused trying to figure out who in the hell you're making fun of. When the fact is, you're not making fun of anybody, but you're making fun of everybody at the same time. I was like, I know. By the way, which reminds me, it's muggy out here today. Ugh. Somebody said something. I said something in a video here a while back. I don't even know what it was. But they're like, I should like put that in a book of quotes so that is attributed to me. You know how like now this is of course uh, post humus like um, H.P. Lovecraft. You know he wasn't a famous writer until like twenty or thirty years after he was already gone. He was a man ahead of his time. He got it. Well. I came up with this quote while I'm having this conversation, you know, uh, because really it's a, it's a, every, everything is in the story. Everything, everything, camels, potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch. Oh, 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 you're getting excited. You're like, whoa, Bigfoot Sasquatch in this book. I said everything. Your mom is in this book, brah. And that's not a mom joke. But guess what? There are mom jokes in this book. <sighs> you see what I'm saying? People's heads are going to freaking explode and I don't want that on my hands. <sighs> All right, so here's a quote, famous quote. To be foolish is to be human, but you get bonus points, right? Because it's about the foolishness and the lunacy of man effing kind. That's why everything's in there. Let's see, I don't want to give it away. Let me give you some examples. And it's not political. It is so not political because I'm not political. I'm like the most not, but it shows how people try to... Uh, Gosh, I don't want to give it away. I just won't give away the part about the camel. Because the part it's a part about the camel that my editor, Truman Jackson, said is going to make people's heads explode. So I was thinking of how can I move forward with this work, this great piece of literature, this great American novella, but give people fair warning. Well, I'm giving you fair warning now, should I choose to move forward with it. Um... What my editor said will go on the back in the book description as, you know, an editorial, you know, under the, you know, what people are saying part, because he said it. I mean, I'm going to have to put some of that other stuff there, too, about this book being responsible for making it possible for man to finally put foot on Mars. I mean, it's all got to go on there. You'll be like reading that stuff. It's like, man, it doesn't even matter that the book description doesn't really say what the book's about. If people are saying this stuff, I got to read it. And I told you what it's about already. It's about everything. All right, so I've warned you here that if you read it, your head might explode. We're going to put 
my editor Truman Jackson's comment about this on the book. And I thought, you know, Truman Jackson, my editor, who uses a pen name because you're more paranoid than me and you don't want people to know even where you live, but you're really good at what you do. But I make him sober up for 10 days before he's allowed to even hold my manuscript in his hand. Hey, He's a talented man. He's gifted, but he's got some vices. And I don't want him, I don't want him seeing like double letters and stuff. So that's an agreement. Oh, and I pay him. Yeah, duh. <sighs> okay, so anyway, we're, we're warning people, okay? Um, so I went back and I wrote, I actually wrote, and I will kind of recite uh, the clean form, because some of the words, some of the, I tell you, this is if it, this is an adult book. There are there's adult language, adult themes, adult situations. If what you read, you get from the kids' literature section in the library, don't read this book. Okay, I've been blasted like, oh my god, in reviews. This guy seems like a nice, clean cut family man on YouTube, but his books has kissing in it and some four letter words. He's not who he proclaims himself to be. Yeah, I am. You know who I am? I'm a writer with a pair that's not my wife's pur purse and a jar. And I write about real life. And in real life, people kiss and say four-letter words. Get over yourself. All right, so anyway, I wrote, let me recite the clean version. Okay, now this, most of you, have already read my book, Isle of Capri, and you love it, and you should. That's an excellent book. And many of you have read my book, Off Switch, which is available not just on Amazon, but also from our Etsy store. Link down below, in print, copy, um, 180 pages, something like that. And if you get it from Etsy, I actually autograph it for you, because it's the kind of guy I am. Um, I, I distribute the print copy of that book, but that's it. The rest I don't deal with. Um, it's like a combination between the two in that, you know, Off Switch is like a psychological thriller. And then uh, it's the writing style of Isle of Capri. It's that first person conversational tone where you feel like you're actually in a conversation with the, with the narrator. Same thing, but it's coming from the voice of a different individual. Trust me. Uh, that Isle of Capri stuff was heavily linked to my actual personal experiences. This thing, this this narrator, this ain't me. Trust me. This is not me. You're still going to kind of like the guy, but you're just not going to like a lot of the stuff that comes out of the guy's mouth and a lot of stuff he does. Um, but here, here's the scary thing. This is real world crap. And I'm picking on everybody all at once. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, well, for instance... You know, talked about that the hate mail we got, the hate literature we got, uh, basically uh, telling me the danger I put this great country in. Country, I, you know, hey, I served. I'm going to that, piss people off. But uh, by bringing my beautiful bride dearly, a.k.a. Giggly Girl here, who is a, an immigrant from a non-white, non-Western nation, I brought her here. And so I've just put our entire country at risk for all these. Wow, that's lunacy. That's one example of lunacy, okay? Let me share with you another example of lunacy. Not about the camel. I'll tell you about the camel because this is where the warning comes in. Um, let's say a guy, like a character in a book, that maybe is based on reality. I don't know. Uh, you know, they live in an area where potentially there has been some Bigfoot Sasquatch sightings. I know, I know. Don't get so excited. Listen, I didn't just pull Bigfoot Sasquatch out of my hat, throw in this book. Because so many people here are into Bigfoot Sasquatch. This book is about everything. This is the leaf from a cherry tree. This is in the book, brah. I'm not making this up. Everything. All right. So, sheer lunacy. Let's say a uh, guy... He, he sees a, a couple over there where there's supposedly, you know, allegedly, potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch in the area, and they're outside in the yard. Um, the man just happens to be a, a white Caucasian male, um, and the woman is uh, Asian. And, this, and, you know, they say, write what you know. So I have a little bit of experience about this. The guy's wife is Filipina. So this, this guy comes over and says, hey, uh, 
you might not want to leave your, your wife alone out here. Yeah, I heard there's a Bigfoot around here. And what, what if he decides to, 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 to eat Chinese? And the guy's like, you know, this is a book. This is in a book, okay? But it might be based on reality, maybe. The guy's like, uh, hmm, huh, hmm. Kind of like, I know this guy thinks he's being funny, but geez, uh, there's so many things wrong with what this guy just said. You're know, like, oh, uh, hey, how are you? And you kind of ignore it, right? So then the guy again is a, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> like Beavis and Butthead. Uh, you might not want to leave your, your wife alone out here. I heard there's a Bigfoot, right? Maybe. What if he decides he, he's in the mood to eat Chinese? <laughs> Did it? Uh, eat? Huh? Huh? Chinese? Huh? And so the guy's finally like, uh, no, actually, I don't get it. Because number one, my wife's not Chinese. She's Filipina. Number two, this whole eating thing is kind of, I mean, don't you think that's kind of inappropriate? I mean, just because she's Asian, not all Asians are Chinese. And then the guy's like, come on. I'm a progressive liberal who votes Democrat. There's no way I can be racist. You know what I mean. Nope, still don't know what you mean. And I think you might not be quite as progressive as you like to tell yourself you are. Sheer lunacy. Sheer lunacy. All right. Even if, bah, you've got a Stop the Asian Hate sticker on your Facebook account. That's why it's called Facebook. That shit ain't real. If you believe that and you don't believe in that kind of activity, why would you go out and say something like that? It's lunacy. That's the kind of thing that my editor is warning me about. Once people, was, I'm, and it's not political. That's just an example. And trust me, the other side gets as much of it as that side. But to claim to be woke, but you go out and you say something like that to a, to a man who has a, a wife who is Asian but not Chinese and think that's okay because of which party you vote for, you're wrong. And you, my friend, are still asleep. But don't worry, we go after everybody, and it's not political. It's just showing the sheer lunacy of mankind. It, it, it's so. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, no, this is real. As a as a as a white middle aged man married to a younger uh, Asian woman, we see crap from both sides that most people will go through life never seen because they're not, you know, and I talked about this in another video. They see any first, oh, we bet you hate Donald Trump because he's trying to support, trying to deport your wife. You're like, well, actually he's not. She's here legally and we don't hate anybody. Oh, obviously you support him then. You're a misogynist and she's abused. Mm, no, we don't support him uh, and I'm not abusing him. It is insane, but what it boils down to is it even that them, I'm saying I'm not political, neither are they. They're toxic and they're lunatics and they try to cover it with a social platform. So anyway, that's my dilemma. Do I continue moving forward with this great piece of American novella length literature that's pretty much going to expose the lunacy of modern mankind or do I not? Because as my editor says, it's going to make people's heads explode. My cake!